Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the loads options that is available in uh, SOLIDWORKS simulations and that is called remote load or remote displacement. And there is also remote mass. And we want to look into what is it, when to use it, and a couple of options in it. So let's say you have uh, two parts that are connected together, like they could be welded, bowl, used with, connected with bolts, or any other way, right? So let's say this part here and this part here, and they could be even different material. So now, let's say some load is applied at the end of this copper member, and the end of this aluminum uh, I-beam is fixed and you want to analyze the stress in the i-beam okay so one way to do it is you uh, basically uh, treat it like an assembly and then of course of course here i made it with multi um, body parts but let's say it's an assembly no no difference here for the uh, graphics of it of course in terms of assembly there would be differences but if you go here to statics, so one thing you can do is to go ahead and um, apply a load right here, right? So you go to load, to forces, and you want to apply it right here at this edge. Okay, and then with selected direction, and the direction is this direction and then let's say 500 newton downward okay so that's one way to do it the other way is since you are not interested in analyzing the uh, stress in this part and you only care about this aluminum part since this load is not directly applied on the aluminum and it's outside of it you can use what we call a remote load and then do not bring this uh, copper member into your analysis altogether. So here you can go to the model and suppress this member here, right? So assume you only have this one. Now, of course, you have to remember the dimensions of that member. But uh, here you go to static and then you go to what? You go to the remote load here. And then it asks you to basically uh, say you want to apply it where. So let's say I want to apply the load on this face. And then uh, where is this load located? Is it with respect to a global coordinate or a user-defined coordinate? Now, in this case, I already defined a, a local coordinate, which is basically right here at this uh, bottom left corner at the end. And with respect to that, I know that copper member was 100 mils. So I need to move from that move, uh, point about 100 mils in the X direction. Then I need to bring it at the center. So the thickness of this um, I, the width of it is 40. So I need to move in the Z direction by negative 20. And then the top of that copper member was uh, basically at the top of this edge, which is about 52 mils above the origin in the y direction so i need to exactly locate it at the place that it was on that copper member and then apply it there so that's exactly what you see i have done here look let me delete this and uh, go to here so you see that I applied it to this face and then I said user defined coordinate. I picked this coordinate and with respect to that 100 along X, 52 along Y and negative 20 along Z. Okay, so it makes my load to be right up there. And then I say I want here a load to be applied. You can apply displacement instead of load. When you come down to translational components, look here. It's in the X direction, Y direction, Z direction. And then look, the first one on the left is force. The second one is what? Translation. A similar thing goes for rotation. So you can have torques and or moments and you can have what? Rotational displacements. So here in the Y direction, I can apply 500 and I reverse the direction. So it's downward. And that is exactly 
the force that I need to have. And here it might not show it, uh, uh, the remote load, it might not show a very uh, beautiful um, display of that. But when you do it first time, it actually shows that. So let me apply it one more time here. Okay, and uh, then you're gonna see better where it puts the load. So here, and then there we go. Look here. So 152, negative 20, and then look here. Y force, that's a force, and then 500, and then downward. Okay, there we go, look. So it puts the force outside the member, as you can see. Okay, and that is a remote load. Now, there are two important options here for how this force is gonna be transferred or connected to that surface. This is called the reference load and reference point. This is the surface that you apply it to. The connection could be distributed or rigid. And distributed could have different weighting factors. The default is called constant or uniform distribution, which I'll explain. And then we have linear, quadratic, and cubic. And then there is, of course, a rigid connection. Okay, so what's the difference between them? If you look at SolidWorks help, it explains to you. So in distributed connection, what you do is, so here, look, point one is your reference node. That's where you put the load. Um, then here, it's a prescribed rotation. It's a, uh, instead of a linear force, but that, the idea is the same. Uh, that face here, that C face, is the face that you want to apply it to. And then on that C face, there are a bunch of nodes, which we call coupling nodes, as you can see. And then what does it do? It basically puts, in our case, some linear forces on those nodes such that the resultant of all of those linear forces on those nodes is, is the same as what? Is the same as the single load that you put at the reference node. Okay? So you replace that single force by a bunch of smaller forces on the surface, some of which is that resultant force. Now, how would you distribute those smaller forces on those nodes? Are they all the same value? For instance, you divide this, um, whatever this F is, you divide it by the number of nodes and each one will get the same value. If that's the case, we call it the uniform distribution or uniform weight, which is the default in um, basically SOLIDWORKS, they all get the same weight, regardless of whether they are closer to this reference node or they are further away. Now, if you want to consider the distance from those nodes to this reference, then you're gonna give them weight. So if they are closer to this node, they get a bigger weight. If they are further away from this reference node, they get a smaller weight. Now, how? Is this weight related to the distance? Is that a linear relation? Is that a quadratic relation? Or is that a what? Is that a, a cubic relation? Okay, so you can pick any of them that you want. So this is called what? Distributed connection. On the other hand, we have rigid connection. In rigid connection, you assume that you connect this uh, remote uh, reference node to all of those connecting nodes. Yeah, right. So here, basically, look, or coupling nodes, you connect those points to this reference one by rigid bars, by rigid links, by rigid connections. Okay. So you do it with rigid connection. As a result, since they are all connected by rigid links to this point, those points with respect to each other will not also move on the surface on this face so what happens your this face also acts like a rigid face so the points on this face will not deform will not move with respect to each other there will be no warping on that surface because they are all connected by rigid links to this point but here 
these connections are not rigid, so those points on that surface, those coupling nodes, can move with respect to each other, and as a result, you're going to see that your elements will warp and will deform. So now, which one should you select? Well, that depends on the application. First, I want you to read with me this part, which is important. It says, when the connection is rigid, the coupling nodes do not move with respect to each other. That's what I just explained. So, that makes that face, look here, the faces where the remote loads or displacements are applied, they also behave like rigid bodies. And what happens? Because the rest of the body is deformable, but that face of it acts like a rigid face, that causes high stress to develop. Okay? So that can cause some extra stress to create, to be created in the part. This is applicable when the body that you did not model and you only put the force that is applied to that. In this case, that was this um, basically copper element, this member here. If that member is a very rigid member compared to your part, then it could be a relatively good assumption. So for instance, this is aluminum. This is a material that is way stronger than aluminum and the displacement of it are much smaller, like for instance, a high strength steel or something, okay? Very hard steel. Then maybe you can consider a rigid link. But if it is the same strength of this or softer, then you wanna apply distributed load. Okay, and the default option in SOLIDWORKS is distributed with uniform weight, which you can change it. So make sure it depends on what material you're removing and replacing it by a remote force on it. Okay, that can tell you whether that rigid connection is a good idea or you go with the distributed one. So now, uh, also to demo this a little bit further for you, I want to run the simulation. So I applied the remote load, right? And first with the rigid connection here. So I put it on rigid connection and uh, I go ahead and run this. So these are the results for it. And if I probe the displacement on some of the points on this surface, let's say for instance on this edge and update the result and then get the plot you can see that the displacements for all of these nodes are the same look that's the meaning of acting like a rigid body or a rigid surface in this case all of these nodes move the same amount in the same direction or the total resultant direction here they are all the same if you apply it in any direction that should be the same as well so those faces, those uh, element faces on the surface, they should not warp, or the surface should not warp. This eye should stay eye, this front face here, okay, or in this case, right face here. That is a rigid connection. Now, if on the other hand, I go ahead and apply a distributed connection, and then, uh, so here, for weighting, I can use uniform, which is default, or let's say linear or anything. And I rerun the simulation, you'll see different results. So here are the displacements again. And uh, if I repeat the same thing and probe the displacements for this surface on any edge, let's say again on the same edge, top edge here and update it, then create a plot, you're not going to see the same behavior. Look, now you're going to see a curve. And these are not super different because the force was not really large compared to the part, but you clearly see that they are different. Therefore, the surfaces of the tetrahedrals on the surface here will not stay the same shape and they will deform. Now, their deformations are not going to be really major in this case because um, your part is basically under a very small load, but if you apply it further, you are going to see small deformations appearing on the surface that might be easily visible.
Okay, so thank you so much for your attention. Hopefully this video was useful to you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.